Come on, Zion. Put those hands together. Good morning, beloved. Welcome to worship at, here at Quinn Chicago. Want to say happy Mother's Day to every woman on our feed, to every woman that we come in contact with. We want to say thank you uh, for uh, being a mother. We know that uh, moms come in all shapes and sizes. Moms are we connected to people in different kinds of ways. Uh, we are uh, just the, the, the genuine quality that women have that is akin to motherhood. Uh, we we welcome and we thank you for uh, lending that to the world. We know that there's young people uh, and there's people all over the world uh, who uh, have benefited from the love of a woman uh, that matches the love of a mother. And so I'm grateful today for all the women that played a role in my life, uh, for folks running around here in this church uh, that uh, helped me and pushed me to become uh, better than I was to uh, Mrs. Cunningham to Miss Ruth uh, to I can name a whole bunch of folks and I'm gonna stop myself now to my mom uh, I love you uh, all the way in Florida I know you probably on this feed today watching worship with us on this morning um, to uh, my wife uh, Sherelle uh, I love you uh, with all my heart and I'm grateful for the mom that you are um, uh, to not only Jayla um, to um, the children that you mother every day at school and so uh, today we have a special mother's day worship experience lined up uh, for all of us uh, bishop ann henning byfield is our preacher on this morning uh, a lot of you know her from the fourth episcopal district before she uh, went out to now where she currently resides as the presiding prelate in the 16th episcopal district uh, i want to remind you as we enter into worship this morning um, to, to engage in digital discipleship, to like, click, share, um, to uh, text this thread to somebody, to write, type somebody's name down in the comments because uh, we believe that God is present and with us. And if something said, a, said here that blesses you, it'll bless somebody else. I want to also remind you that there's a couple ways to support this ministry as we move forward, endeavoring to be God's hands and feet on the world. Uh, you can go to Cash App, you can go to Givelify, you can text to give, or you can go to our website and click Give Now, or uh, you can mail uh, your gift to 2401 South Wabash Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. You will have another opportunity to do that uh, as we move through this worship experience, uh, but we wanted to put that out there at this point. We want to thank each and every one of you who came out uh, to be a part of the blood drive on this past week. Uh, we're grateful that uh, God allowed us to gather together as a church to be God's hands and feet. And that for each one of us that gave blood, for each one of us that donated, the potential to save three people was there. And so 
uh, we're grateful for how God is moving in our lives. So uh, get ready. Uh, worship is about to kick off. We're going to hear from our music department next. And um, tell a friend to tell a friend that uh, the right Reverend Bishop Ann Henning Byfield is the preacher this morning at Quinn Chapel on 24th and Wabash. Come on, y'all. Let's worship God. Happy Mother's Day. 
It's Mother's Day all around the world and we want to recognize mothers and say to you that we know that you are the backbone of all society, of all humanity. We thank God for mothers because every mother has a special role to play and has played a special role in so many lives. If you're like me, my mother had seven children and she blessed us all in such a way that each of us felt that we were the only one. Now we also know that there are those mothers who may have one child and that child of course feels like they're special. We also know that there are those mothers who have given of themselves because they weren't biological mothers, but they became mothers to others in such a way that those lives have now gone on and are becoming exactly who Christ called them to be. You see, that's the role of mothers. They're facilitators. They're facilitators of success. They're facilitators of love. They're facilitators of, of accomplishments. They are facilitators of those who go forward and make this a better world. Mother, thank you for just being you. Happy Mother's Day. Amen, beloved. Let's pray. God, we approach your throne this morning on behalf of mothers whom you've entrusted with the care of your most precious little ones. We thank you, God, for creating each mother with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for your sacrifice of self that each mom gives for her children and other little people that run by her. For the late night spent rocking uh, an infant, for the hands that are callous from washing and wiping and scrubbing and mixing and uh, stirring and hugging and patting and disciplining and holding and writing and erasing and painting and pouring. God, we thank you for the gift of time that mothers give their children whether it's stay-at-home moms or working moms or moms who have some combination of the two, we thank you, God, for the flexibility of mothers. We thank you, God, for the tirelessness of mothers. We thank you, God, for the perseverance of mothers and for their, their devotion. We pray, God, that you give each mother strength, that you would help her to see uh, in every mundane task the eternal, that you would help her to see the cosmic significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical world-changing events may be happening anonymous, anonymously in her home. Help her to forgive those who undermine her significance. We, God, especially pray for single moms who must lean solely on you for help uh, with their children. We thank you uh, that your big arms surround children who uh, may never know and have relationship with some folks. We also pray for mothers who never had the honor of bearing children, but whose, nurse, who, but whose nurturing extends to the many who need them across the threshold of their lives. God, we ask you to be the daily bread of tired mothers. We ask you to be their living water. We ask you to be their source of spiritual and physical strength. God, we pray that the same grace that flowed from the Father to the Son to us in salvation will flow from mothers to their children. We pray that each mother rejects trying to be perfect and instead embraces the goodness of the gospel. We pray the rhythms of repentance and forgiveness shape every home. Lord, that you give each mother a worshipful reverence of you, the creator and sustainer of life, God. That you help each mother to rest in the knowledge that they are built, uh, they are stewards of your children, and that your spirit can produce change into the hearts of each boy and girl. May mothers find rest in you. And most of all, Lord, on this day, we honor mothers. May we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, who've nurtured, nurtured us, and who pray for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you who formed and knitted each of us in a mother's womb. And that God, that you would be there for mothers who've lost a child. No mother should have to bury their children no mother should have to see their children go before them. But far too often in this world, for reasons that nobody understands, God, that you will comfort those who need it the most. 
ones who care about us the most. Mothers from near and far who protect us and give everything for us. We thank you, God, that on this day that you brought a mother to preach to us. Thank you on this day. I pray, God, that you will remind us to love on the mothers in our lives, both who have our blood and who don't, both who we're all connected by spirit. Have your way, God. And I'm asking that your Holy Spirit lead people as they encounter mothers who have the difficult task of protecting all of us, of leading us, of helping us to become. Thank you, God, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. A number of weeks ago, folks, I told you about Quinn Chapel extending our ministry offerings to do more to help families with children that are school age. Well, what we came up with was Jesus and Me Ministries. This is a ministry that allows young people to come together through social media to establish some of the social contacts that they need to develop in a time when COVID-19 has kept them apart. What we're doing is we're sharing the good news in ways that are relevant to young people. There are lots of things going on, but I'll tell you what, I'll stop talking and let you hear what our participants are saying themselves. Take a look at this, folks. My name is Rebecca. I am in Reverend Jefferson's class. What I like about the Youth Sunday School Ministry is that every time we get on that Zoom call, we're always connected and we always share our thoughts about ways that we can all reflect and bring God closer into our lives. Hello, everybody. My name is Jayla and I'm 16 years old. Um, what I like about church service is how everybody is, always participates and it's always good vibes, you know. Um, the teachers, they really engage themselves with all of us and they make sure that we get the lesson. Hey Quinn family, my name is Precious and I'm 19 years old. What I like about the Jesus of Me Ministries is that what we learn about in our different classes, I can relate to it and you can see it happen almost in everyday life and I find that really interesting. Hey, my name is Caleb. I am in Dr. Harris's class and the thing I like about the Jesus and me is that we always talk about things that can be connected to real life. Hi, my name is Shirley Ann and I'm 15 years old. I'm in the 14 to 15 group at um, Quinn Chapel and the thing I like most about our group is that it's very unique. It's something new. We learn something new every Sunday and it keeps us all engaged. Hi, I am Jada. I am in Miss Melanie 12 to 13 Sunday school class and the thing I like about it is that we get to meet new people and learn more about God. Join us! So, you've heard what our young people said. Folks, it's wonderful. We want to encourage you to do this. Invite young people that you may know. Maybe they're in your family, a niece, a nephew. Maybe it's somebody in your, in your community, on your block. Invite them. And for all of our folks who have young people here at Quinn Chapel, that's right, that's great that our young people are doing just that, inviting their friends to come and be a part of this because it's a way for us to share the gospel in a way that's so relevant to their lives. Like the young people said, this thing is lit. Thanks for being with us. Join us with Jesus and Me Ministries. It's preaching time, folks. And with us today is Bishop E. Ann Henning Byfield. Uh, Bishop Byfield is from the 4th Episcopal District. And for those of us who may not know, she has served in Michigan. She's served in Indiana. She actually was here in Chicago for quite some time. And she is a bishop who has lived out the wonderful reality of go. Go into all nations and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bishop Byfield is currently the bishop of the 16th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She is there in the Caribbean. She's in Haiti. She's in various countries where there is a need not only for the gospel of Jesus Christ as a saving grace of God, but the gospel of Jesus Christ as Christ steps into the circumstances and the difficult realities that people are facing in the world around us. Bishop Byfield has distinguished herself as a poet, as a writer, and as you're going to see, as a preacher. 
So it is my distinct pleasure and a blessing to all of us that we would have Bishop E. Ann Henning Byfield with us today. So after this next musical rendition, the next voice you're going to hear is the voice of our preacher for today, Bishop E. Ann Henning Byfield. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be Across the hottest desert, I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. Lord, if I find favor, find favor in your sight, Lord.
just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Peace is where you are, and joy is where you are, and love is who you are. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Love is who you are. Enjoy is what you are. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you I want to be where you are I gotta be where you are want to be where you are Gotta be where you are I want to be where you are I gotta be where you Just to see you, to behold you as my king, I want to be where you are. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless God in this Zoom sanctuary. Let everyone who has breath praise ye the Lord. To Bishop John White and Supervisor Penny White, to Dr. James Moody, and to First Lady Mrs. Corliss Moody, to the ministerial staff, the stewards, trustees, and all of the officers of Quinn, and to the persons who are handling the technology, um, we bless them. And to Reverend Clark, who has been coordinating with me for this process, and of course to the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I am grateful to be once again virtually in the House of Quinn, a church that has survived and has thrived. The church has moved forward under the leadership of Reverend Dr. James Moody. And so we are grateful to see the work and the legacy that continues under the name of a writer and a blessing. T turn with me to the um, familiar passage of the um, Moses passage, Exodus, the second chapter. And king of Egypt had a talk with the two Hebrew wives. One was named Shipra and the other one Pua. And he said to them, when you deliver the Hebrew women, Look at the sex of the baby. If it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. Then I'm going to go down to the second chapter in the first or the third verses. A man from the family of Levi married a Levi woman, Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw there there was something special about him and hid him. She hid him for three months and when she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket boat made of papyrus, waterproofed it with tar and pitch and placed the child in it. Then she set it afloat in the reeds of the edge of the Nile, the fourth of the six verses, and the baby's oldest sister found herself a vantage point a little way off and watched to see what would happen to him. And Pharaoh's daughter came down to Nile to bathe and her maiden strolled on the bank. She saw the basket, opened it and saw the child crying. She said, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. And his sister was before her and said, do you want me to go and get a nursing mother for the Hebrews so she can nurse the baby for you. 
Recently, for a subject, women who misbehave. Women who misbehave, or on this Mother's Day, mothers who misbehave. I'm free, the necessity of my sanity, the level of my disintegration, calls a reassimilation of me. I no longer yearn to be in order if it means that I am out of order with me. And your definition of self, your identification of perfect, your standard for wholeness causes a dissolution in me and holds me hostage to someone else's declaration of my totality. My dissolution is over. No more complacency and conformance to an impossible normalcy. My acceptance, no longer accepting your description of my hair, my color, or my hips, my beauty, my belief, and my behavior, now all self-defined. I desire not your recognition at my rejection. I am finally in order with me and with God, which may make me out of order with you. Women who break the rules. Recently, I was in a discussion with a young theologian in seminary ready to graduate. He was pontificating to me about how the church preaches income truth about black men, not black people, but men. I listened, I didn't bait, but I would stoke the fire. Every often would say, well, well, what do you do about how people have been used the Bible to deny women rights in the society? No elder, no bishop. There are passages that limit women's participation in the Bible. Hmm? I mean, like he said, that there are no female prophets in the Bible, particularly women prophets. And I said, there are women prophets in the Old Testament, and I named them, and I named them in the New Testament. And he says, well, they're all insignificant. I said, well, they've done great things. He said, well, no book was named after them. So I said, so to be worthy, one has to, to be a major or a minor prophet, or like Moses have portions of a book written for him, and he said, yes. H how limited are we in our biblical knowledge and how limited are we in our understanding of the roles of women in the Bible? Many still only know of Jezebel or the so-called holy one in Mary and Ruth. And when we celebrate women, we often use Proverbs 31 and I have to tell people she was not real. Go back and read the whole story. We know women in the Bible as submissive and docile and unthinking, existing to please her man and her woman. But we don't read about women who work outside their homes unless they are prostitutes. And we don't read about in tribal societies, in agrarians and nomadic societies. Men often went out to work and women took care of the finances and ran the business, including selling the product. Laurel Ulrich says that women who behave rarely make history. Behave means meeting someone's expectation of you. Behave means following someone else's orders and rules and norms, even when it does not fit who you are. Behave means that you deny the vision that God has given you because no one accepts this or understands it. And we live under the authority of rules and locked in the boundaries set with them. We are shaped in them, learn them early, live them, and it takes a boulder to shake us from breaking the rules. We do need rules. Rules protect, keep society balanced, and are necessary for living in a culture. We need stop signs to prevent accidents, and reading the labels before taking medicine avoids worse sickness than if we had not taken the medicine. Following the rules not to text and drive saves lives, including your own. Washing hands stops the spread of disease, and wearing masks now stops the spread of COVID-19. And we need rules, but rules can hinder growth and stifle creativity and lock us up in self-bondage and cages. Teaching a child to color only in the lines helps discipline, but sometimes can deny the spontaneity and creativity of a vision, of an individual. So occasionally rules need breaking. Rules that subject people to slavery and genocide and abuse and misuse and insults. Rules that su su suggest that people are going into prison from a pipeline and rules that 
that justify rape and no food stamps and lack of affordable health care and killing unarmed blacks and tasing while you are looking at men who are, don't have guns. Need to be broken. New rules that kill us and justify our death. New rules that criminalize the victims and having court sustain our murders must be broken. New rules that says that we no longer will have the ability to vote like we have voted before. We need to break some rules. And I didn't say women who, who behave badly, badly. I need women who misbehave. People who misbehave usually have a higher calling, a more justable, noble justification, something beyond themselves. People who behave badly often do it for their own gain, their own sanity, and just because they can. So I want women who know how to misbehave to thank God that, that you can do what God has called you to do. To be a woman in the Bible in the first place meant that you had to be either incredibly good or by that standards incredibly different. Behaving women are kind and gentle, appropriate and respectable. But misbehaving women often have to challenge the norm and create a new cultural norms and bring about a revolution and therefore consider it very different between the people who you talk to. So I thank God that we've had women who misbehave. I think Ida Bell, Ida Bell, Ida B. Wells and Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman who misbehaved. I thank God for our aunties who wore blue eyeshadow when it was not popular and, po and purple eyeliner and flaming pink lipsticks and their own designed clothes and had their own money and controlled their lives. I thank God that even on this Mother's Day, Nanny Helen Burroughs decided that the church wanted women to raise money. So if they had to raise money, that they would have a day in which they could be in worship and lead the service. That's why this text is so pivotal. That's why I'm not concentrating on any one individual. I'm lumping them together because these women, named and unnamed, misbehaved and changed, misbehaved and changed the course of Hebrew history. When we read the book of Exodus, Moses is celebrated. They are not. Moses is considered the liberator. They are not. Moses is a household name, but they are not. Yet there will be no book, no Hebraic movement, no release from 400 years of exile if women had behaved. Sipra and Pua, Yaakovad, Miriam and Bathea are marginal characters, but they're powerful sisters who came together and rocked the well. Shipra and Pua were midwives. They were in the palace. They had access to the king. They were decision makers. They were at the top of their trade. And when they were told to kill the boys, they refused to do so. They feared God. The, the, the third woman is not named here, but we know who she is from a later package. It was Yukavad who was the Hebrew woman who was the mother of Moses. And she already had at least one daughter and a son, Miriam and Aaron. She had a boy child born in the middle of genocide and decided that her child was not going to die. The fourth woman is Miriam, who at the time was only a young girl, born in the crucible of slavery. Black children raised in the ghetto in poor condition in slavery have been raised to be quick thinkers. They know how to survive. They know how to duck when they hear a gunfire to protect themselves as best as they can. They know when the police comes around what they need to do. And children in these conditions know the code. And so it's no surprise that she stood there and waited and when Moses was identified as a Hebrew by Pharaoh's daughter. Then she stepped to the moment. Pharaoh's daughter is bathing with her handmaidens. And when she learns that it is a Hebrew, that she decides to keep the women. The other women unnamed keep that, kept their mouths shut. Her handmaidens and women were around that when she brought him to the palace, they could have gone and told their husbands or told somebody else, but they kept it to themselves. So I got only a couple things to tell you that I need women, mothers, to misbehave. And when you misbehave, live the truth within you. They were all different, these five women of this chapter, but yet 
they live the truth within them. There must be a greater call in your life than the mundane or the predictable. Something beyond Friday's hair appointment and takeout on Chinese restaurant. Something beyond the same old martini and olives. You have to decide that your path and that path will always intersect with someone who does not understand you, will ignore you, or disempower you. These women were not waiting for someone to choose. They stepped up to the plate some in power, some not in power, but they step up to the plate. There is a child in you, a project in you, a group in you waiting for you to be a misbehavior. Don't think too long. The strategies are too close to the top. Make an informed decision. Understand the consequences. Make a choice. You don't have to justify what God is telling you to do. Don't Feel like you have to defend your shop with your intellectual strength, your fighting spirit, your independence, your singleness or marriedness. You have to choose the truth. You have to have a confrontational conversation with yourself right now. I am well able. And if I perish, I perish. I'd rather be alone than another day in this kind of abuse. I may lose my job, but when I sue, God's going to bless me. And so you have to have a conversation because someone is going to call you stupid and radical and crazy and not acting like a woman or you are a harlot or a lesbian. You have to talk to yourself that God says so and therefore I'm doing it. And there are times when you don't have time to call your girlfriends. You just have to step out and live out your truth. So, secondly, you have to decide to live beyond fear. You must move beyond fear until... We face the realities, we're going to be locked in fierce power. We have to step beyond our comfort zone, stretch out of our fullest potential. And if fear keeps us untight, we must name them to unname them and be able to admit to ourselves that, that we are not going to be afraid of death or rejection or singleness or loss of health or loss of jobs or or fear that somebody is going to say something or do something. Call out your fears, voice of intimidation and early how childhood shame. Call out your fears that you no longer will listen to bullies, bullies who criticize you all the time, bullies who remind you of your own limitations and hindrances, bullies who make you think that because you made a mistake, that that is a part of your permanent hindrance to becoming stronger, that you must not let them put you in their hands for you to be locked into it. So yes, there will be an announcement that you made a mistake, a Facebook comment about your, your, your failure, some viral picture that makes you draw back. We may blow possibilities and opportunities and promises, but you must get back up again. Shake it off. Yes, I know only you know, and it keeps you up, but God will make a way. Eve may have been brought into sin, but through Eve, we got salvation. And so what stopped you from being a liberator? A baby out of wedlock, your GED prison record, huh, huh? You heard of a brother named Paul who killed people, but God used him? Ever heard of Rahab, a prostitute who saved her family and married one of the 12 sons? Look at yourself. And then look at your mamas, mamas who took no prisoners, mamas who fought to the end for the lives of their children, mama who would go hungry be before they left their children starve, mama who would float the floor, walk the floor at night praying for you, mama who did what they had to do. This misbehaving was not foreign to women and was not foreign to a mother. Kill her child? No. And so we can't not live in fear. And we have to see beyond ourselves. Much larger issues are available. There's much to do. And you are created for leadership, which may mean breaking some rules. Too many children to be saved. Too many lives for breakthroughs. Too many businesses to be established. There's no time to be correct when you're under someone's root if it keeps you in bondage. There's no time to argue over colors and signs if it keeps you in bondage. Too much is at stake for you having meetings endlessly on whether or not the napkins will be red or pink or chicken wings or meatballs. No, we have to understand that somebody needs to answer the question, who will fight for the cause of the oppressed? And your answer will be, I will. Who will demand from others that public schools get it together? And your answer will be, 
I will, who will preach to the poor and teach people to read and stand up when teachers cut our children's hair and lock them up and mistreat them because there is a larger vision ahead. So behave means the children may, the church may not grow. Yet you're sitting here and wishing, but misbehave means that you go into the highways and the byways and then go and speak to those who need to be healed. Behave means you sing the same old songs the same old way, and misbehave means you sing a new song. Behave means you allow people to run out the least. Misbehave means you confront those who would hurt the lost. Behave means you, hear, you hide your own sin, but misbehave. You say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. And so behave means that you don't act like who they say you are. You act like who God calls you to be. That you may have to start a movement to demand whatever God lets you. That means taking lemons and making lemonade and lemon cakes and lemon pies and growing a lemon orchid. How means healing black boys and girls in jails, young men and women who are facing mistakes, men and women on drugs, and to move in health crisis. Now you can do it because you got good training. Jesus came to the earth and brought the rules broke the rules to heal the sick on Sabbath. Jesus broke the rules when he talked to a woman alone. Jesus broke the rules when he talked to a woman caught in the act of adultery and told her, go and sin no more. Jesus broke the rules when he went into the temple and confronted the money chambers. Jesus broke the rules when he died for the sins of the whole world and then broke the rules when they put him on a borrowed grave. Broke the rules when on the third day he got up and then later ascended into heaven. There is nothing you can do if you trust God to help you live out the life God wants you to. So keep on praying, keep on singing, and keep on misbehaving. God needs you to break the rules. Thank you, Bishop Byfield, for uh, that wonderful message. Uh, we thank you uh, and you found it not robbery to be with us on this Mother's Day. That as a mom, that you still lift to God's name on a day where we celebrate you and all the mothers in our lives. Beloved, the doors of the church are all the way open. Uh, maybe you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, but uh, today could be the start of the best days of the rest of your life. It's easy as ABC, except that you've made mistakes. B, believe that Christ walked the earth, uh, was hung, bled, died, but rose again. And confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And today could be the start of the best days of the rest, the rest of your life. If today you need prayer, uh, just type down in the comments, I need prayer, I need Jesus. Maybe you need a church home. Uh, you can type all of those down in, in the chat and uh, we will get back with you immediately because it is important to us that although we're not connected physically, that we can still connect and help folks do what it is that God has called all of us to do to work out our soul salvation, to be together, to be better, to pray for one another, to not forsake the assembly of the believer. That although we can't gather here physically, that we would assemble virtually and that God would still have God's way in our lives. <clears throat> Let's pray. God, we love you. We honor and adore you. We bless you. We magnify your holy name. We thank you for this day. We thank you for those who, who typed in the chat, whatever their request was. And we thank you that you've divinely connected all of us together. Have your way today. Bless us. Keep us. Have somebody be brave enough to just type in the chat or to send a text message or to send an email asking what must I do to be saved. Requesting to be um, pulled into the body of believers here at Quinn, Chicago, where we endeavor to be God's hands and feet. And that God, that you will have your way in all of our lives. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, it is it's offering time. This is the time where we get to worship God with our gifts. Uh, below me on the at the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll see the ways that we uh, offer here to partner with this ministry as we endeavor to be God's hands and feet. Uh, you know, giving. Uh, a lot of people think it's about the church specifically. But really tithing, we're a tithing church and the tithe is about you and your relationship with God. That we're all required to give a tenth 
of that which God has given us. And it's not just the money in your pocket. The tithe is your time, your talent, and your treasure. That if you are awake, if God wakes you up in the morning, and you have time that you give of it uh, to a worthy cause. We're all talented in one way or another. Matter of fact, we all have different gifts than other people. God does that on purpose. And so if you're alive, you're talented in one way or another, and it's important that you give of your talents uh, to a worthy cause. Now your treasure. God gifts all of us differently. But God requires that we give a tenth of that which God has given us, that we trust God. That's really what this is about. Can you trust God with what God has put in your hand? I want to remind you that if you uh, have your hand clenched, you don't have room to receive anything else from God. God wants to test you to see if you're uh, a good steward over what God has given you. So if you're a good steward over what God has given you, it causes you to open your hand. And when you open your hand, God will bless you with more. I want you to know God is still in the blessing business. God is still pouring blessings out of the windows of heaven. And I had a presiding elder tell me one time, if you're not getting blessed, you're standing under the wrong window. So get yourself under the right window. Give because you can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. As we endeavor to put clothes on people, as we endeavor to house people, as we um, in, endeavor to, 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 to give folks job training, as we endeavor to pour into our young people, as we endeavor to continue to lift God's name, I want you to partner with us as we move forward. You can mail your gift to 2401 South Wild Bash Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. You can text to give. You can uh, use Cash App. You can use Givelify. Um, or um, you can go to our website and click Give Now. One of those ways uh, will connect you with the opportunity uh, to bless God with what God blessed you. Let's pray. God, we love you. We honor and adore you. We thank you for this giving moment. We thank you that you're still in the blessing business. And we thank you that uh, you've shown us which window to get underneath. And so God, douse us uh, with your love. Uh, pour out on us. As we give, return back to us some 10, 20, 30, 60, 90, some 100 fold. And for those that didn't have it to give but wanted to give, make it so that on next time they're able to do so. Uh, we'll be ever careful to give you all the honor, praise, and the glory. It's in the master's name of Jesus the Christ that we lift this prayer. All of God's children did say, amen. Well, beloved, again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, you know, I forgot to mention um, the young lady who actually is going to make me a grandfather for the second time, um, Alexis, my daughter. Forgot to wish her a happy Mother's Day, too. Uh, listen, um, Remember all the mothers that have been in your life. Remember the people who don't have your blood, who've mothered you along the way. And uh, if you can't call them, send them a text. If you can't send them a text, send them a message on Facebook. Love on somebody this morning, because uh, they all need it. Remember the mothers who've lost uh, a, a child. They need it the most today. Uh, unfortunately, days like Mother's Day, and Father's Day and all of our holidays aren't always the best days for everybody because people are experiencing loss in, at the same time. And so remember everybody. Uh, let's not uh, just focus on one side, but remember everybody as we move forward because that's what I, I believe that God calls us to do. And so uh, on this Mother's Day, send somebody a text message, send somebody an email, call somebody. Take somebody out to lunch, right? Socially distanced, but um, be together as family. I think that's what all of our mothers will want from us. Uh, Bishop Byfield, thank you again. Uh, our love to you and your family. We're praying God's richest blessings continue over you and the 16th Episcopal District, that God fill you back up again so you can continue the work of the church. Um, and as we leave this place but never got sight, walk before us, God, so we never know what it's like to be lost. Walk next to us, God, so we always know what it's like to have companionship 
walk around us, God, so we always know what it's like to be covered and walk behind us because we understand the weapons do for them, but if you're back there, they will not prosper. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy, be the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God did say, amen. Hey, uh, before you go, engage in digital discipleship, like, click, share this with somebody because if something blessed you here today, it'll be sure to bless somebody else. Listen, we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Happy Mother's Day again. Peace.